Hey, what's going on Clipper fans? This video is coming out by special request. I've had a number of people asking about some of the projects that we're doing to the boat this winter. Uh, specifically the bottom project is what we're looking at today. Uh, we've decided to replace the entire bottom of the boat. We're going with a bottom coating that uh, is brand new. Uh, hasn't even been tested in fresh water yet, but we're going to give this stuff a shot see how well. The salt water testing looks amazing. Uh, so we're going to see what it does in fresh water. But before we, before we put that coating on, uh, we're doing a lot of work to the bottom. I want to make that surface as perfect as I can possibly get it. Um, so we've sandblasted it down, stripped it down, sanded it, and now we're, we're filling every possible little crack chip or whatever that's in there, uh, doing some repairs on that. I did have a couple blisters that needed fixed, so we've, we've ground into those and got that fixed too. And this is sort of a video of everything I've been doing on that uh, up to this point. So. I've taken all the sound out of the video. Nobody wants to listen to sandblasters, sanders, vacuums, and things like that. And I've got most of the video running anywhere from three times to eight times normal speed. Uh, there's a lot of hours into this project already. Uh, this is just a very small um, version of what I've had going on in there. I tried to knock it down to about 10 minutes for you. I will narrate my way through this one for you, kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing and the, the products that I'm using on it. Um, to get this bottom back into you know 100% shape, and then uh, by the end of next year, we'll be able to talk about you know the efficiency savings uh, that I'm seeing in the boat. You know, I'm shooting for 15 to 20% on fuel economy. We'll see if that works out. So, hope you enjoy the video. Have a great day. Thanks very much. Well, I should uh, title this part "How Not to Blast the Bottom of a Boat," uh, but unfortunately, what's done is done. Um, he was using sand on there. It was supposed to be soda blast that I showed up and he's shooting sand at it. He's shooting straight on. Uh, kind of ended up with, I think, a little more damage from this blasting job than I was hoping to. But nonetheless, it's done. This was our first step when we came out of the water back uh, in the beginning of November last year. Uh, we blocked it up in the parking lot and had all that old uh, ablative bottom paint blasted off of there. From that point, you know, we just set the boat in the building. Uh, and sort of left it alone really for about a month or so, five or five or six weeks maybe, um, and just really let all that dry out and everything like that. So this was the uh, the initial part of the process, blasting most of the old paint off the bottom. Uh, from that point, we just started sanding. I went over the whole bottom of the boat, uh, just with an 80 grit, um, just getting off you know the bottom paint that was left smoothing out some imperfections and stuff like that, getting it down to a surface where we, we could see what we actually had to work with and uh, finding the areas that needed repair, so on and so forth. Uh, still sanding here, just sanding, like I said, 100% of, of the space, the area below the water line. Everything got its initial sanding. Um, um, from that point, you look at the areas that need repaired. I go into them with a disc sander like that. Uh, it sands a nice bevel. Uh, you can get right down through the gel coat, right into the original glass. Uh, and when you need to make a, a deeper repair into a blister or something like that, you gotta you got to get down in deep to it, remove all of the damaged area, uh, and leave a nice beveled area um, for your repair to stick to. So it kind of spreads out over a surface there. So uh, we went over, you know, with a fine tooth comb looking at the bottom and the stuff like that and, and sanded into the areas that needed repair like that. Uh, now we're just wiping the bottom down with acetone, um, and that just cleans off all the dust and stuff like that. Um, it'll clean out any any wax materials and things like that. Anything that's going to cause your epoxy not to, to stick and stay in place. Um, so I use an acetone, this acetone on a rag, and, and uh, wipe it pretty heavy. And we actually go through this process several times. It's done almost between every step, you know, when you're putting epoxy on. Make sure you've got, you know, the clean surface for it to go on. So... Uh, uh, mixing up a batch of epoxy here. I'm using the West System epoxy uh, for the harder, the deep repairs, uh, blisters, and, and things like that. Uh, I use a 405 filler to thicken that epoxy. Um, that's pretty hard stuff. Uh, we, of course, the epoxy gives it the good adhesion to the hull, but that 405 filler, um, it, I mean, it's just as strong as can be. A little bit tough to sand, but um, that's what you need. You need something that's going to stay in there, but you know, not have the flex to it or anything like that. But so, just mixed up a batch with the 405 filler. Quick glimpse of what it looks like. Looks like a pile of dog dew on a plate there, but um, it is what it is. And I use a plastic uh, spatula, basically, or a, a plastic 
putty knife to to fill in all the low spots and, and make sure we've you know got the the void filled 100 percent no air bubbles trapped in there or anything like that the stuff the uh, it does shrink a little bit as it dries so you can either try to lay it on thick and then you're left with the battle of trying to sand it down to the to the original surface uh, the right height that you need um, or you can just lay it in there uh, wipe it down flat it will shrink when it dries um, and then you end up you know cleaning it up and filling again but um, that's kind of the process you have to go through to get it right this is sanding on the transom I didn't have any major repairs that needed done on the transom uh, so that's just been gone over with a light fairing coat uh, which I think is what I'm mixing up right here uh, I'm using the West System 410 uh, lightweight fairing filler in the West System epoxy um, that we're using that to, to just smooth up the surface there's still some imperfections in the paint uh, from the the previous barrier coat was put on over a surface that was probably not as smooth as I would have liked it to have been so we're just taking the time we've got right now literally to get that surface as good as I can possibly get it so I'm fairing out the entire bottom of the boat uh, with this lightweight fairing filler um, filling in you know, any small chips or indentations I've got filling in the imperfections in the paint surface uh, so we use the the lightweight fairing compound for that which sands pretty easy uh, but we go through and sand the whole bottom of the boat again uh, and then look for anything else you know every now and then you'll miss something or you'll get an air bubble in there and go back and clean it up and, and fill it again so uh, we definitely go through this process several times so this is just mixing the batch of uh, fairing compound to go over the bottom in my abominable snowman suit there trying to keep the dust off my clothes and out of my washing machine couple things you're seeing there the the different colors in the bottom of the hull uh, as I've sanded into it you know I've sanded into older repairs that were done before some of these are repairs that I had done uh, just a couple of years ago uh, but this obviously is the front end so you know we've we've you know struck some floating objects out there that whether it's you know sticks or I don't really think I've hit any major logs or anything like that I know there was one time where uh, I did manage to drag the anchor across the hull, bringing it up. Uh, that's no fun, but that left me with a nice scratch in there. But uh, the different colors that you're seeing is just different areas of repair that I've done, just trying to make that surface as perfect as I can get it. You know, some of those are old repairs, and some of them are pretty fresh here. Uh, the boat is a 1979, so, I mean, it's been through, you know, a good number of years of, of chips and scratches and repairs. So just spreading the fairing compound in now, just, just really trying to make that surface 100% as perfect as I can possibly get it. So just drag the fairing compound out, uh, you know, force it into all the, the small crevices and everything like that. And then, you know, for the most part with the putty knife, you're wiping most of it right back off again. Uh, the whole thing will get one more. One more sand over that fairing coat. Uh, that'll smooth that out. I'm sanding with 80 grit. Um, you, you don't want to sand too smooth because you do need, um, you know, that texture in the surface basically for the bearing coat to adhere to. So, um, the uh, I'm sorry, the barrier coat. Um, that's going to be the next step really. After we get all this smoothed out, sanded down, and cleaned up again, the barrier coat is the next step. That's what's actually providing your waterproofing for the fiberglass. Um, I'll use the Interlux uh, Interprotect 2000E barrier coat. We'll, we're you know going for a three to five mil thickness on that. Um, so this boat will take about six gallons of uh, barrier coat to get that done. Uh, after we get all through all of the fairing and sanding and cleaning, and I've got the surface to where I think it's as good as I can make it, barrier coat is our next step. Well, if you've made it this far through the video, you've done pretty good. Uh, there's nothing exciting about this work. Um, unfortunately, I'm a little meticulous about it. I'm trying out a bottom paint that we're going to use on this boat that's actually never been tested in fresh water before. So before we put that bottom paint on, I want to make sure I've got the bottom of the boat, the surface, just as perfect as I can possibly get it. Um, shooting for a, a, a big increase in fuel economy and stuff like that too. So obviously having a, a smooth haul um, 
you don't want to be dragging, you know, a sandpaper haul through water. It will slow you down, and and in the end, you'll you'll see that uh, you'll see that at the gas pumps. You know, you're just not going to get the efficiency that you need. But this is kind of it: uh, sanding, filling, fairing, cleaning, uh, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat is sort of the steps we're going through right now. Um, I'll get some more videos out sort of as we get through this process and other things we're doing on the boat this winter. Uh, just making, you know, overall improvements to it and how well it runs and operates and everything like that. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I have not enjoyed watching this. I haven't enjoyed doing it, but we're getting it done. So thanks very much. Everybody have a great day and we'll see you with the next one.